Hello everyone, welcome. I'm Katie, a member of the CK12 team, and my colleague Laramie and I will be running today's webinar, Groups and Practice 101. We're so glad you joined us. Before I introduce you to this program, I'd like to do just a quick reminder about Zoom. So remember that you can see two different options on your Zoom screen. One is for Q&A and one is for chat. During today's presentation, if you have a question, please post it in the Q&A window and we'll be sure to get to it either live in our demo or with a typed response. And then we'd love for you guys to introduce yourselves in the chat window, but please make sure you're clicking all panelists and attendees. Otherwise, only we at CK12 get to see what you're typing and not everyone else joining us on today's webinar. And we don't anticipate any technical issues due to our broadcast, but if you're having issues, please let us know in either window. So thanks so much. Um, just a reminder, this webinar is part of CK12 Certified Educator Program. Um, so that program allows you to become CK12 certified if you complete seven sessions this summer, and it allows you to join a community of educators completing a training pathway. So today's pathway is part of the, or today's session is part of the intelligent pathway, um, but you could have taken it as part of your custom pathway or just added it as an extra session today. Any of the above are totally fine. Now, if you decide that you wanna do more than what you've currently registered for, just go back to the CK12 registration page and register for those individual webinar sessions and you can add any extra ones in that you would like to add in. Um, if you have questions about this program, feel free to type them in the Q&A window and our team, including STAR, will help answer those questions. Um, but right now we're gonna jump into this content and so I'm gonna turn this over to my colleague, Laramie. Thanks, Katie. So today we're gonna to talk about three different topics. We're gonna to start with CK12's adaptive practice system, which is an intelligence system with 150,000 questions. It adapts to students' needs by challenging them with harder questions if they're doing really well or recommending more resources if they need additional help. We're next gonna talk about CK12 class and study groups. On our CK12 site, you can create groups where you can share content and host discussions in different kinds of classes, or where you can create specific classes as a teacher and specify which students can actually involve, get involved in the discussions and see assignments and so forth. And then the final thing we're gonna discuss today is the assignments and student progress options. As a teacher, you can easily assign practice and our other modalities, our videos, our clicks, our sims, and then see the work your students are doing on those modalities either from the modalities directly or from the uh, course and class group screens. Our main goal is that by the end of this session that you understand how the adaptive system works, that you can assign practice and other modalities to your classes, and that you can, as a teacher, monitor the progress of your students. Katie? So before we get into the core content of this webinar, we wanna find out a little bit more about you and how much you already know. So you'll see a poll here in a few seconds that's gonna ask about your knowledge of CK12's adaptive practice system. So the question is, how familiar are you with the CK12 adaptive practice tool? Is this something that you're brand new to that you've never kind of worked with before? Do you use CK12 practice occasionally or do you use CK12 practice frequently? Um, so we're gonna start seeing, it looks like you guys are doing a great job of filling this poll in. Um, we'll just give it another couple of seconds for you guys to finish answering. Um, maybe five more seconds. You guys look like you're almost there. And I think we'll end the poll at that. Um, so as you guys can see, it looks like most of you are new to CK12's practice, which makes total sense since you signed up for the Groups and Practice 101 option. Um, and some of you guys have used CK12 just a little bit as you worked your way through. Um, but so yeah, it's great to kind of give you a chance to learn more about that practice tool as we go forward. Okay, and just as a reminder and a clarification, by the end of the session, your goal should be to find appropriate practice for each various concept, to be able to assign practice, reads, interactives, and other modalities to your classes, to be able to make an educated decision regarding whether you should be using a study group or a class group for any, any specific purpose, to be able to create a new study group or class group, to be able to find detailed per question feedback on students that have completed quizzes or practice sessions, and to quickly get a feel for the number of students in a class that have completed a given assignment. 
Now, for those of you who choose to take our customizing practice session later this summer, here are a few of the things that we're going to cover in that session. So we'll be talking more about that customizing quizzes, all of those settings for quizzes, reordering questions or making new ones yourself, um, as well as the idea of multi-concept assignments. So um, kind of taking concepts across CK12 and grouping them into a single assignment, and then what reports look like for both of those pieces. Plus, we have a session about learning management systems coming up this summer. So if you want additional help with any of those skills or with learning management systems, please be aware that just like our Flexbooks 101 session that we just held recently, this group's in Practice 101 webinar focuses on the basics. So we're gonna prioritize questions related to the basics during the webinar, but we will, as always, stay on and address any complex customizing questions or other questions that need a live demo at the end of our presentation. We also encourage you to join us for our customizing practice or learning management sessions and sign up for office hours. So I think with that, we're gonna move into adaptive practice. So let me just give you an overview before Laramie goes into kind of the live demo piece. So what is adaptive practice? So CK12's adaptive practice system is a digital tool designed to meet students at their current level of understanding and then help them master the next step for any concept. Because of that, our system will bump students up to available harder questions if they are successfully answering, or it's gonna make recommendations such as text to read, a video to watch, or an interactive to work with, if students are finding that current level too challenging. So why you should use it? You get access to 150,000 questions with a variety of question types. Plus, when students submit their work, you as their teacher, if you've assigned it, can see info such as the time they spent, their streak, and the level of questions. Now note that because our adaptive practice system meets students where they are, a student who is struggling may hit the goal of 10 correct with all easy questions, and a student who is more advanced would have more of a mix of levels. So for teachers, this ensures that each student is progressively and appropriately challenged while maintaining a clear record of each student's level of understanding. And now the great question, where do you find it? So you can find CK12 practice on the website through the concepts option or the adaptive practice icon on the homepage. Plus, we have a free app for CK12 for all smartphones and tablets. So this tool provides the ability for students to practice at their own pace on any electronic device, whether they're in school, at home, on the bus, or on the way to a game. Okay, thanks Katie. I'm gonna take over here and show you guys what this looks like on the actual CK12 site. Let me grab this screen here and show you what my desktop looks like. Please pardon the mess, I try and clean up at least once a year. All right, here we are at the CK12 home screen. This is what a teacher sees when they first type in ck12.org. If you are signed in as a teacher, and we'll go, go through a little bit more of that later, but signed in as a teacher, I get to the uh, CK12 homepage from here. All, immediately we see access to all the different kinds of uh, activities that CK12 offers. Right now we're gonna talk about adaptive practice. Now there's a couple of ways to get access to the adaptive practice. The, probably the most common way is for someone to specifically pick a subject, let's say, I don't know, grade one through five, I'm not sure, fourth grade, time, and then looking at the clock and telling the time. If a student is working in a specific concept like this, there will be the whole list of modalities, and almost always, and by almost I mean like 99.9% .9 of the time, the modalities will include practice. Down at the bottom, you click on the practice card, and you'll see that the modality for practice comes right up. Now, as a teacher, you can, if you're looking through the activities you're going to have your students be working on, you'll see that right away in the top left-hand corner, you have the option to assign any practice you've discovered to your class, as we'll discuss more later, but you'll see that that button is very easily accessible. So when I reference later talking about assigning something directly from the concept, that's what I'm referring to. So let's take a look specifically at the practice in the way a student sees it. Now, I'm signed in as a teacher, so instead of get started here, it says preview, and we'll take a look at the other view here in just a second. But when the practice comes up, there are a number of things I want you to take a look at here. First of all, the questions as, as they're presented to the student are often multiple choice, but as Katie noted earlier, there are a number of different kinds of questions. You'll see that as I'm delaying here a little bit, the system lets me know that there are hints available. Again, nearly all the questions that we have on CK12 have specific hints. The sense are designed to help guide the student toward the correct answer, 
without giving them a specific step-by-step -step solution for getting the answer. Now, if the student moves along, makes a couple of guesses at something and wants specific uh, information after that pop-up has gone away, the little quick, the little hint thing is down on the bottom left that they can access at any time. Additionally, if a student is having trouble figuring out work, particularly on, say, a math question, there's a scratch pad that's available. They can click on the scratch pad button and draw right on the screen, work out math problems, or do quick sketches for themselves. And if there's something that comes up that looks like a problem with the question, hopefully you'll never have to use it, of course, but here it is, improve the question on the bottom right if something comes up. So let's take a look at just answering a couple of questions here. Because I'm in the elementary section of our site, all, all of the elementary questions on our site have complete solutions. So if a student answers a question incorrectly, once the, or correctly, once the, student has, once the question has been answered, there'll be the option to see the solution on the bottom left that is not available until after they've answered the question, so they can't cheat. But if, for instance, like I did here, they didn't know the difference between a quarter of an hour and a half of an hour on a clock, we can take a look at the solution and it'll tell us what, what exactly went wrong and how to get the question right the next time. Move on to another question. And you'll see the progress bar up on top here. I wanted to talk about this because it tells the student how they're doing from an overall standpoint. Um, naturally, my first question I got wrong because I didn't know what a half hour looked like, so the progress bar doesn't show that I'm making pro much progress here. So let's assume that I can figure out this next question correctly. It says it's something till three. We're about half past three here. So I get it right. Notice the progress bar starting to move up from zero. I have one question out of nine answered. As I move on, here we're at a quarter past one. Progress bar, I'll continue to move on. At any time, I can check the solution and see if what I'm doing makes sense and see if the reason I thought an answer was specific makes sense from the standpoint of the course. Note the progress bar showing now that I have a brain streak started, meaning that I have multiple questions correct in a row. Finally, one more here. Um, do another question, say 115, so what, quarter after one. Brain streak is up to three. My goal here is just to get 10 questions correct. They don't have to be in a row. Um, all I have to do is make sure that I have 10 questions answered correctly, unless that particular concept has less than 10. In this case, you'll see that it shows three out of nine. There are only nine questions available for this particular concept. Most concepts have anywhere from 20 to 500 questions available. Um, and then finally, say, say for instance, I'd taken a look at this question and decided that maybe there was something wrong with it. As I mentioned, we can improve the question by clicking on the bottom right. And you can tell us what's wrong with it so that we can make the question better for everybody else. Okay, now let's take a look at another way to find practice on the CK12 site. I'm gonna go back to the home page here. So just again, as if I had just typed ck12.org, I can either go down to a specific concept as I showed you before, or I can click on adaptive practice right here on the home page. By clicking on adaptive, adaptive practice here, I see every different area of CK12, all the math branches, all the science branches, and all the, all the elementary branches laid out in one big, one big window. By clicking on one of the topics here, let's say arithmetic, I can see all of the topics in arithmetic and each one of these links is going to specifically take me just to the practice for that link rather than take me to the concept that shows all the information about a specific topic. So let's take a look at uh, say estimation of whole number multiplication and division here. Oh wait, I wanted to show you one other thing. On this page here, as I'm looking at these different topics, if as a student I've done any of the work on these topics before, it'll actually show a percentage bar over here on the right hand side that gives me a feel for how much further I have to go on that. Let me see if I can show you that from another point of view. This is another user that I, I work with of my own account. Let me see if I can show you what that looks like really quickly. It's nice as a student to see what things you've done and what things you have left to do. There we go. See over here on the right-hand side, obviously I like estimation of whole number multiplication and division because I've done it 190%. <laughs> so we're gonna take a look at that again from our student standpoint here. Now, if I have not done this before at all, the window will pop up to the student saying, this is approximately how much time it'll take to complete it. In this case, about six minutes. It'll give me some examples of things I can do before I start practicing. And it'll even give me some little hints as far as what kinds of scores other students have achieved.
by doing some of the other practice ahead of time. For instance, students that have looked at the estimation of whole number multiplication and division read tend to get about a 70% on the practice. Students that have done just the video have gotten about a 68% or better on the practice. So it kind of encourages students to look more deeply into a concept than just answering the questions. Hopefully, the students have some motivation to get the best score possible, and so they'll take advantage of some of those options. Now, by comparison, if I have done something before, for instance, this estimation of whole number multiplication division, which I've done as myself, now you'll see that I've completed my practice goal of 100% by quite a bit. I can see that I can still watch some of these other resources if I feel like I need more help. I can even get a feel for what kinds of questions I've answered before simply by scrolling down. As a student, this is very motivating. I've had a number of my own students that have, have commented that they like this very much. They can see the kinds of questions they've had before and the kinds of things that they felt like they were proficient at or not proficient at as far as the levels of the questions available. Okay, let's take a look at this, the practice from here real quick, and then we're going to move on to looking at submitting um, activities. So just one second. There's a couple more questions. Okay, actually, I think we've gone through, I was thinking I hadn't gone through the uh, adaptive practice uh, improve the question thing, but I did the last, last section, so I think we're good. Katie, do we have any questions that we need to answer on this? Yeah, so we have a couple of questions that have come in. A few things that I want to kind of talk about in general, and then maybe I'll have Laramie just reshow a couple pieces that um, you have kind of reviewed, but that we want to make sure that people catch again. Um, so that improve the question piece is if you find a question that's incorrect for some reason, please um, let us know and we'll update that question. Um, and we can kind of go from there. So right, kind of what Laramie was showing there. And then we had a question about whether or not all practice assignments have the get a hint and use solutions option. Um, so I'd say 99.99% .99 of our math questions have a hint attached to them. Um, we're continually adding new questions in, and so sometimes those get added in and then the hints get added in right after that. Um, so you may occasionally see a question without a hint, but I'd say almost all the math and science questions have hints in that process. Um, and then the solutions for a student usually show up for the elementary piece at this point in time. Um, if you're creating a quiz, you have some other options for what you're showing up, but the one that he was demoing was that piece. And I'm gonna let Laramie cut in for a second. Yeah, I'm just gonna throw in here actually that we are actively developing full solutions for the upper level math as well. And in fact, uh, geometry, we're at about Mm, I'd say about 60% of all of our geometry questions now have full walkthrough solutions as well. Once those are at more of a, say, above a half for all of our upper level math, then we're going to enable by default the option to show the solutions for the upper level math as well. The reason it's not enabled for upper level math right now is just that so many of them are not available. It would seem kind of silly for every student every time they click on solutions to not have one available. We want to make sure that they're happy with what they're seeing. So another question that came through was, how do his students get a score less than 100% if they have to get 10 questions correct? So if they've been answering questions incorrectly, um, that's a case where you know, they could choose to submit practice before they get to that 10, um, or they could kind of work their way through. I know I talked to a teacher at one point in time, and she said her goal was for them to get 80%, so they'd be working in a class, and she'd walk around as, as soon as they hit that piece, she'd check them off. Um, so there's definitely different options in terms of use cases where they might not work their way towards that full amount, um, but that's kind of our set component as we're walking through. Um, and then we have questions about maybe videos that are available to guide students or do teachers have to guide them through completing the practice session. Um, so Laramie, maybe you can go back into showing kind of those resources that were available at the beginning there. And then also what happens once, again, kind of if a student is struggling and that meter bumps down and some of those things that pop up as we work our way through. Absolutely. In fact, uh, that's, a, that's a great question. I started here with the looking at the clock and telling the time. So we'll just continue with that because obviously I'm pretty bad at it. So let's just continue to show how bad I don't know how to read a clock. And you'll see that after I answer enough questions incorrectly here, the system keeps giving me suggestions all along saying, you know, come on, you can do better than that. You can do better than that. Nothing is impossible. 
Um, sure, that's two o'clock. I can't be wrong. Yeah, here we go. Now you'll notice after I get enough wrong in a row, the system pops up a little uh, suggestion meter. <laughs> it says that perhaps maybe you're in over your head and you should take a look at some of the other options we have for this concept. These are going to be similar suggestions for other resources to use that we saw at the beginning of the practice. In this case, there's a Plix that talks about world clocks and there's a video that talks about looking at the clock and telling the time. So as a teacher, if you have specific students that need more assistance, they can get it on their own without having you having to stop a class or to pull students aside and work with them individually. Any one of these other options that you click on will pop up in a separate window. You can work through that other suggestion, in this case, the Plix, learn a little more about the topic, and then once you're done reviewing how to do it, you can go back and continue with the practice until you get your 100%. Great, so we have kind of a general question about missed questions being asked again in some manner. Um, so they are actually being asked again. Generally, any of our questions are asked kind of one less time than they would be um, noted. This particular bank, as Laramie said, is kind of one of the smaller banks, so they might get it sooner or later depending on the particular topic. Um, but if it's true false question, it's only going to show up once so they can't click true and then false and you know If there's multiple choice, they'll only get it a couple of times They won't get it four different times to work their way through um, So that's definitely a piece that we're working at um, I think we had a couple of questions that came in about accessing this So I'm gonna have Laramie just show you one more time how to get to the practice And then we're gonna move forward because some of the questions that are coming in have to do with reports and different pieces and groups And those are the next two pieces of this demo. So we're gonna have him show that and then we're gonna move on from there Okay, so just once more really quickly from the home page if I go to ck12.org Not even any kind of prep work, just go into the home page. There are two general ways to find the practice. Either we can, from the very top here, click on adaptive practice, and then pick the topic that we're interested in getting practice for from there. Or, again, from the home page, we can scroll down to the available subjects, pick any subject we want, say algebra, and then from the list of available concepts, pick a concept to work on or to study. And then generally speaking, the very last option or one of the very last options will be practice. And you can click on the tile there. And as a student, you can get started right away. Or as a teacher, you can get started assigning that to your class. Great, thanks Laramie. Um, so I think we're gonna bump back into this presentation for a second, um, just so you guys can talk about that next piece. Um, so we're going to talk about CK12 groups, and so there are a couple of things to note. CK12 groups include both groups that are for classes and study groups. Um, so they both allow you to share resources and have group discussions, and then the classes option also allows for these assignments and student reports. Um, there are questions about why you should use it. So as we just noted, there's that class discussion option. Um, if you're using a study group, you can have students work together and share resources, or you and your colleagues can work together and share resources. Um, so those are great options. And then all of this adaptive practice that we're talking about can be assigned in those class groups. And you can see some of the same reports Laramie was showing earlier from there. And then the question is where to get it. So all of the class groups are available on um, the CK12 homepage, www.ck12.org. Um, in that dashboard and via the groups icon. And so I think at this point, we're gonna let Laramie show you what that looks like. Okay guys, so we're gonna talk about how you can make a new class as a teacher. And I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways to access the, the new groups and new classes feature. Now, the most common way I, I would think as a teacher, certainly the most common way for me to find it, again, it's from the CK12 homepage. And show you here real quick. Maybe I'm not showing my screen. I'm hearing notices that I'm not paying enough attention to what I'm doing. So one second, let me make sure my screen is shared properly. There we go. Hopefully now you can see what I'm doing again instead of hiding it from you. I apologize for that. All right, I'm gonna go back to the homepage. 
Now, as Katie was talking there, I was frantically trying to create a brand new user so I can show you what it looks like for a new teacher as well, but I'm gonna have to just explain to you what the difference looks like. So as we're, as we're working as a teacher from the homepage, if we look up at the top of the screen, you'll see a couple of different major points, major sections of the site that you're gonna to wanna to access regularly. The first one is the dashboard. The dashboard gives us an overview of the account that we're working from. In this case, it's just a demo account that we set up specifically for these. Now from this section, from this dashboard, if I take a look right here beside content where it says uh, that I'm a member of nine groups that have 37 members, if I click on this, this takes me directly to my group activities page. This shows all the courses, all the classes and all the study groups that I'm a member of. Again, for this demo account, we have quite a few. Now there's another way to access the same thing. From the home page. instead of going through the dashboard first, I can choose the groups button directly at the top of the page and it's gonna take me to the same location right away. So if you're already looking at things in your own dashboard, don't bother going out, just click on the, the groups and the members, members link there. If you're at the home page, you can go directly to the groups button. Okay, um, now the biggest thing I think that's important to recognize before you start any group or you start any class is the difference between them. Now, because we have two different options, let me see if I create a group here. There are two different options that pop up. Let's call this one sample. We have the option to create a class or the option to create a study group. Now a class is specifically designed for teachers that are hosting a class of students. It allows you as a teacher to create assignments that have due dates and to review the practice of those assignments as The only you can and you'll see here right away it's going to give me the option to add students to my group. Um, we're going to talk more about how to add students to a group in another session, but just very quickly you can either add them by name, by email address, you can send them a link, um, you can send them a chat message so that they can they can join your group from the outside. Uh, there are a number of different ways for students to join existing groups, and we will be talking about those in another session. Now, um, as we talk about assignments and student progress in the next part, you're going to see this, this section here under assignments populate a little more. But the idea for assignments is that you can tell students specifically what to do and when, as long as they're assigned, as long as they're a part of a specific class. And then, like adaptive practice, a full, a full exploration of these groups is kind of beyond the scope of this webinar, but I do want to make sure that you're capable of adding things to a group, pulling things out of a group, and recognizing where your assignments and reports are. Great, so I think we have a number of questions that are coming in. Um, so let's just pause for a second and see if we can kind of get any of these from here. Um, so some of them asked about kind of using the life science or middle school concept book, and they're asking about the adaptive practice questions in there. Um, so any of the concept collections in our book, in our system are tagged. So maybe Laramie can bring up the life science for middle school book. Um, go to all subjects, pull that up. Um, and then see the adaptive practice questions. So if you go into the concept collection on any particular topic, you'll actually be able to see those pieces as you work your way through. So any kind of chapter and then a particular section within there. So there we go. And you can see kind of the practice here and then up in the top right. And actually kind of in some of our intro sessions, we talked about that actual practice widget as well. Um, so that'll be a great thing to kind of see for students as you work your way through. Um, we had another question about trying to find it from kind of the concept piece. So let's actually pick the example someone said, if they went back to that homepage and pulled up calculus. So if you actually, if you choose adaptive practice first, sorry, and then you pull, if, so actually this is the piece. If you choose adaptive practice here 
and you pull it up, it bumps you directly into the practice piece. But if you go backwards a step and go through the calc branch, that's where you're gonna see the assign option. So here, if you click, if you know you're doing practice for calculus and you click that and then you choose functions and even and odd functions was the example, and you click on that modality page. So here, once you click on the modality page, you'll see the option kind of to preview that practice, that orange button, um, which is the step that you went through to get to that piece. But here, before you click preview, is the assigned to class option. So when you're browsing practice, you're really just kind of seeing what practice is out there, but you want to access it from kind of that home page. Um, so we had a couple questions about monitoring student uh, discussions and different things. As a teacher, if you're creating your student groups, you can monitor them that way. Um, if you have any concerns, you can contact us kind of about those options. For your particular study groups, you're allowed to turn off that Q&A option. Um, so, and then for our general forums, we monitor using CleanSpeak and as well as kind of general monitoring as we work our way through. Um, so those are some pieces that might be helpful from there. We had a question about having more than one teacher in a class group. That is something that um, is not currently an option, but I would definitely recommend that you email us and note that as well. And we will continue to add that to our list of requested updates um, and kind of based on people asking for things and how things work um, and the time that it takes to do that. As we shared in our original piece, we have a very small team working for all of this. And so we prioritize based on student needs and class needs and what we can accomplish from there. I'm gonna jump in just really quick on that, Katie. Um, actually, I have a number of teachers that have worked in like team teaching groups that actually will just make a teacher account with sort of a generic name. Uh, we had uh, the school I worked at was Desiderata, so we had a Desiderata Science. And both of the teachers that taught science would sign into the Desiderata Science account, and then both of them would have access to the resource, the resources and the reports for that class. So that's a way to sort of you know, work around the option of only having one teacher per group. Great. And then we had a couple different questions that have to do with syncing with Schoology, as well as syncing with Google Classroom. Um, so Schoology is currently completely integrated. Google Classroom, we're working on the integration for um, the practice component as well. Um, and those we can answer some more if you're looking for more details kind of at the end of this webinar, or I really recommend you join that learning management system webinar as we work our way through. Um, and as always, this webinar and all of our webinars are available afterwards, so you're welcome to rewatch them. Um, and I'll show you the link to that page as we work our way through. Um, and Canvas, just like Schoology and Google Classroom, is integrated accordingly. So we'll take a couple more questions here, maybe. Let's see if we can find a couple good ones. Um, in terms of students, a couple kind of broad ones that are coming up multiple times, I guess I should say. I'm having my colleagues laugh at my choice of wording. Um, but so there's some questions about kind of classes being passed um, you know, from one year to the next or dividing groups as you work your way through. Um, so you can make multiple groups. You can make kind of a general class group and then subgroups for different pieces if you're looking for stuff. So just kind of make a separate group A, group B, and assign different work within there if you want to differentiate that learning. So that's something that we highly recommend. Um, as well as working your way through and kind of passing them on from one year to the next, you'll, you'll still be able to see those groups. Um, so if there's something specific that you're looking for, if you're trying to like pass them to a different teacher or something like that, um, then, you know, that might be a different question. Um, but in this case, you could definitely still see the progress that they've made and the student in their own place could always resubmit that progress to their new teacher if they wanted to do that. I think there's a question about test questions that are available. Um, are they the same as the practice or are there separate question bank? So the 150,000 questions is our full question bank. They either show up in the course of the adaptive practice system or you use them within a quiz that you've customized. Um, and if you're looking for kind of options for that piece and making those quizzes specific, then I would join us for that customizing practice piece because that's what that is covered under. Um, and so definitely check that out and we'll go into all the details on making those extra um, assignments that you're looking for yourself. In terms of embedding them, um, we talked about that in Flexbooks 101 a bit and we'll talk about it, actually it's being talked about in the advanced Flexbook editing session, excuse me. 
Um, and so we'll talk about kind of pulling that up. But maybe, Laramie, if you can just go back to that, any of the practice modality pages, um, and you can just show them where the embed piece is, because they might as well see that at this point in time um, from a modality page. So not from the browse, but from the actual modality page is where you can get kind of all those extra pieces besides the practice itself. So he's just gonna open that up, pick a practice topic, go into the modality kind of tile that we're working off of. And then on the left, those three buttons there, right under create new questions. So all the way down at the bottom piece, if you click on that embed option, that's where you can actually pull the embed code and you can embed that um, within one of our Flexbooks if you're working to go from there. So I think at this point in time, let's maybe take one more question right here. Um, and that has to do with kind of that subgroups or that splitting of classes and different assignments. You're, when you're assigning, you're assigning to whole class. So if you're looking to differentiate, then I would say make a general class group and at this point in time make Kind of separate areas so that you can create separate assignments for the other pieces so it might be kind of one big group and then another two or three groups for different levels of classes or if you want to do you know an extra advanced power you know challenge section you can assign that piece there um, so i would add those pieces in and actually the option to add students that are already in the system with just a click makes that much quicker so if you already have say a general algebra class and you want to make a specific class for your advanced algebra one students for instance you can add those advanced students directly to your separate algebra one advanced class simply by clicking on their the uh, little tile next to their name and you'll find that is very quick and very easy Laramie maybe before we move on to kind of the assignments if you want to go into one of those groups and just show that add members piece then that might be helpful for people to see Get it to work. There we go. Okay, so let's take a look at how to add students to an existing class real quick. So down here under settings, we can add students. Now there are a number of different ways. Um, the easiest way to do it with particularly an older group of students is to write a group code on the board. Then the students can join any group they want by, by uh, typing that into the join group code uh, box. I'll show you where that is here in just a minute. Or you can send them a group link to a text uh, address or some other mobile, mobile usage that they can just click on that link and it'll join them directly to the group. Finally, you can add them directly as a teacher by typing in their email, by uh, creating an account for them, whether they have an email or not. Or as I mentioned a minute ago, you can add existing students if they're already a member of another class by either selecting everybody or individually selecting the students that you want to add to a new class. You don't have to type their information again. Thanks, Laramie. Um, uh, so it sounds like I'm getting a little bit of muting. Hopefully that's clean. Hold on two seconds. Sorry about that glitch. Um, hopefully that is a clean audio at this point in time. So we had a bunch of questions about parents monitoring student progress. Um, and so I would say there are two options. You can have your student pull up their grades or you could create your own kind of teacher account and invite your students to that. And then you can see any progress that they have done. So in that case, it would be your child at this point in time. Um, there's not kind of a separate feature for teachers, but you're welcome to monitor kind of whatever you want based on assignments that you create for, for your student. So I think with that, I'm gonna take back over. We're gonna continue on. We will continue to answer questions as we go, um, but we wanna make sure we get through the core content within that hour option. So from here, I'm gonna pause that for a second. Okay, let me introduce this video before I click go. So it's a great time to kind of show you the spotlight on one of our teachers. And this teacher is Jessica Favea Casillas. 
and she's a chem teacher at Austin High School in El Paso, Texas. So it was kind of amazing to be in her classroom and have our whole team go down there and visit. Um, Lindsay took this video footage and she got to tell me all about seeing the different CK12 tools she used with students who access CK12 on laptops, on tablets, and on mobile devices. So let's see what that looks like. I like to use CK12 groups uh, to assign resources. It's completely accessible and, uh, and versatile. And the fact that, that I can edit the textbook makes it a little more personal. So my students see that, oh, well, you know, Miss Favela Casillas um, went ahead and edited it for, for us. Therefore, I should read it. I better read it. I've shared a resource. You have two shared resources here, okay? You're going to get the one that says types of reactions. Later on, you guys are going to answer a Q&A. And by the end of the lesson, you'll be able to figure out um, what kind of reaction it is just by looking at it. I found that a lot of students relied on their on their phones and uh, sometimes I have like right now I have kids who um, who were absent the day before and I needed to, it to be easy for them to just go to whatever it is that I'm asking so uh, what I did was create I created a poster with a QR code they could easily scan and they had the codes that were particular to their their group number which was their period number I divided them by class um, I thought that was easier and way more efficient I didn't have to waste time um, creating a login and that group number just takes them straight to what they need. In all, it's it's a very positive movement, the fact that anybody can use these textbooks anywhere, really. If I tell them to read it before class, uh, they will go and read it before class. There is no excuse for them not being able to learn. There's no excuse for them not being able to acquire any, in, any kind of information. So, Hopefully that gave you kind of an idea of how um, our class groups, our assessment, kind of different pieces are used in a real situation. Um, and I think we, at this point in time, we're gonna move into the third portion of our webinar today, and that's on assignments and reports. And so we've been getting some questions, so this is where you'll get to see them answered. So we mentioned briefly how to quick assign practice and other modalities to a CK12 group, but if we go into the groups feature to learn more about assignments with multiple concepts, that piece will be covered later, but in this part, you'll kind of see the general gist on assignments and just give you an idea of how they work. So our, within the groups tool, we're gonna, you can create single or multi-concept assignments um, and review student progress. From outside the groups tool, you can assign kind of that one-shot modality option. Um, options for using it. So really, the goal is for you to be able to see, either as a teacher or as a parent, how students are progressing. And you can kind of tailor your teaching accordingly if you're in a class or maybe make suggestions for your child as you're working your way through. Um, just note that assignments for practice show you that percentage out of the 10 goal. Assignments for quizzes show you the percentage out of the number of questions that you had. Um, and then the other modalities, if it's text or video, it'll just tell you if the student accessed it. Um, for Sims and Plix, you have to get partway through the interactive um, as you work your way through. So you can see that progress accordingly. And Laramie's gonna go into all of this, but this is kind of the general overview. And the last part is that assignments can be created and reports accessed on CK12 through any class group, um, and your reports can be accessed accordingly in the same place or through an integrated learning management system if you're using that. Okay, I'm gonna take a look at seeing this stuff on the website here, show you how these things work. Let me take over the screen again. Sorry, Katie, I'm gonna steal it from you whether you like it or not. Look at that, I've got the power. All right, okay, let's take a look at some of the different ways to assign CK12 content, and it's actually really, really easy. Um, let's start with going into a given concept. So as an as a algebra teacher, I would commonly go into algebra first, just because you know, that's where I feel comfortable. Let's choose, say, sets and symbols. Now, if I'm working with students on a specific topic, such as sets, sets and symbols, I can either have them go into the concept and review some of the material directly, or I can assign specifically them thing, to my students to have things that they should do specifically instead of just covering the entire concept at once. So from the set, sets and symbols section here, I'm going to start by picking a modality. In this case, just the read real numbers. Now, as a teacher, as soon as I click on the real numbers read, I can review it, make sure it's what I want my students to go over, make sure it covers the material that I want them to understand, 
And then I can just click the Assign to Class button on the top left. And it's going to come up, give me an option to type in a little bit of instruction here. Actually read this, please. That's kind of my default thing for my students because they tend to not. And then I can just choose the courses I want to add that to. We'll say a sample course, jumpstart grades, and I can set a due date. The due date does not have to be the same for individual classes that I'm signing it to. Um, we'll call this one due the 29th, and say my other class is my superstars, and they're going to be due the 26th. Once I've chosen the due dates for the different courses, I hit assign to classes. And now that's going to show up in the assignments for those two courses. And we'll go look at it again here in just a minute. Now, just for practice, let's take a look at assigning a different kind of a modality. If I click the All button here, I'll see all the available modalities for sets and symbols. Let's take a look at uh, Plix, one of our interactive math widgets, math uh, play, learn, interact, explore, interact, explore options, allow students to kind of get their hands dirty with math or with science. So I like to assign these for my students to make sure they understand the topic. As a teacher, again, I click assign to class at the top. Same window pops up. Play with this. Choose the courses, the classes that I want to assign this to. Set my due dates. I thought I clicked sample, maybe I didn't, there we go. And assign to classes. And then let's pick one more option. This one we may have to go into science. I wanna find a, a sim to assign to our students here. Let's go back to the home page, Just like we can find our adaptive practice with a single button on the home page, we can also find our simulations. Let's choose a physics simulation. And we'll do just the first one we see here. Plain mirrors, yep, that's the one I want. So let's go to this sim. And then again, there's our familiar orange assigned to class button at the top. I'll click on it. This is way cool. Sample class, jumpstart grades. Actually, I'm just gonna not assign a specific due date to this one. I'm just gonna make sure they do it at some point. Okay, good. All right, now let's go see how those things showed up in our other window. Go back to the CK12 homepage. Probably not the most efficient way to do it, but that's the way I always do. Okay, then click on groups at the top. Now I assigned all those things that we were playing with to my sample class and also to jumpstart grades. I don't have any other students in the sample class, so I'm going to use the jumpstart grades class here to take a look at how they showed up. And here in my default window on my home, you'll see that the most recent activities were these three assignments that I added in. If I click on the assignments section, We'll see them in that same list. Um, they go by due date, so we're gonna have to go down at the bottom. Some of these I didn't give a due date for, like the prom night and so forth. But as I click on these to get more information about them, I can bring up specific information about that assignment, see when I assigned it for, who I assigned it for. I can change the due date or add a due date in this case because I didn't when I was looking at the assignment before. And now all of my students will see that updated time. Now let's take a look from the student standpoint at that same screen. So this is a student that's part of one of those groups. They go to their home page. They see that the one of the classes they're in is that Jumpstart Grades class. And now in their list of assignments, here we go. In their list of assignments, they'll also see all these new things coming up, including that prom night sim that we just pointed out. Okay, let's take a look at what the reports for these look like. So if as a student, I take a look at one of the assignments I'm given, say the prom night sim, I go and click on the prom night sim, it opens up in a new window, And I go, you'll notice here, it doesn't have the assigned to class option because this is a student. It says here at the top, this is currently assigned to you. Please proceed to interact with the simulation to turn it in. So as a student, I go clear through the simulation, 
I try out the different options. I can watch the video that tells me how they work. I want to do the actual interactions involved with the simulation. Once I've actually shown that I've put some time into it and I've actually done some learning from it, that option to turn in will appear at the top of the screen. And as a student, I can click that. Now the system is going to realize that I've been in there, I've done what I was supposed to do, and it's going to show me on my own homepage. I go back to my assignments. Let it reload that page real quick. It's going to show that I completed that assignment. And I can also see the same thing. Let me go down to where it showed where it was completed ones. I can also see the same thing from my teacher point of view over here. Here's the assignments I put out. One of those is prom night. If I look and see the reports, we're gonna go over the reports here in a little more detail in just a second, but you can see right away that Bob Tester, that student was the only one that's completed it so far. So you get immediate updates as far as the student working on the assignments you've given them. They don't have to be given assignments that are just practice questions. They can be given assignments that are any modality, whether it's a video, whether it clicks, the sims, or the practice questions. Um, you can assign individual things to the students just to make sure that A, they're learning everything they're supposed to be learning, and B, that you're encouraging them to try the different options for, for learning about the topics that they're studying. Okay, so now let's move on a little bit to the reports section. Now, as a teacher, when I first click on groups, this is the group's home, home view here, right? I'm gonna pick my class, whatever class it happens to be. In this case, we're gonna stick with that Jumpstart Grades class. On the left-hand side, we have that assignments link that I've clicked on a couple times already, and you can actually access a lot of the report data from that as well. But we also have the reports link here. If I click on reports, I get an immediate overview of all the students in my class and all of the assignments that I've given out. You can just click through it, see all the individual active assignments, and get a really quick feel for which students have done things, how much they've done, have they just started it, have they done a lot of things in it, have they completed it. If I want to get specific detailed information, I can either click on the student and it'll zoom in on a specific student and see all of their assignments. And from there, I can get detailed information on any specific assignment they've worked on, including specific questions they've answered, how they answered them, whether they're easy, medium, or hard, but very detailed per question, per question uh, information. Or if I go from that same reports page, I can also click on individual topics and get an overview of that topic or that assignment and see which students have done it. So as a teacher, you have a lot of really powerful, very easy to use tools for assigning things and then for getting the reviews and the reports on the assignments that you give out. And that's our quick overview of that. Katie, do we have any questions? Thanks, Laramie. That's great. We're gonna take maybe two questions or so right now and then kind of wrap up the core part of our webinar and then as always stay on for extra questions. Um, but the first question is, will the Q&A be visible if you go back to revisit this webinar? You can always hear it um, kind of live if you watch the recording of that, which are posted on our page. Um, but we are going to kind of compile a Q&A, probably not per webinar because there are so many overlapping questions, but we'll try to get a Q&A sheet out to you guys at some point in time in this program. Um, and then we had a couple questions about the Sims and Plix. Um, being designed by a teacher and right now our simulations are really they take a whole team of designers and developers and content experts and kind of all those pieces to work their way through and design those and build them um, and then the Plix team it here has a number of members on it that are building out those pieces um, if you're interested in kind of getting ideas for that um, while you can't design and build them we well, can't build them yourself if you have suggested designs for us then definitely email us and let us know and we'll try to pass it on to the corresponding team um, and then we had a couple questions about embedded components that I want to address so you can assign a, flex, a section in a flexbook and those embedded modalities are not assigned separately. So you're assigning kind of that read, and when you access that read and you review it, that's what you're assigning. If you want to see progress on any embedded modalities, you would need to, at this point in time, assign them individually, because that assignment is saying, hey, I want them to go read this stuff. It's not necessarily requiring them to do the components within that. So make sure that you assign that practice or that video or whatever that is kind of as well as the general read. So just to clarify that, as, as Katie's pointing out, if I go to a specific read as a student, you'll see that there are videos often embedded in the read here. Um, of course, they have the practice link up at the top, as we pointed out before. 
when you assign this read, the student is being assigned the, the request as a teacher for them to go review the read. You won't know specifically whether they've watched a video, you won't know whether they've done anything else with it, you'll just know that they have access that read. If you do want to see that they've watched a video in specific, these videos are listed also as modalities on the modalities page and you can assign them individually. Great, thanks Laramie. So we had a couple questions about kind of exporting reports, whether that's printing your reports or exporting them into a spreadsheet. Um, and we're really working on reviewing options to make that possible. We know that's kind of a frequent re request that we've been getting. As we said, the more people that ask that, the more that kind of we take that into account as we talk about our priorities for the next round of development. Um, so feel free to continue to ask those questions and we'll let you know um, when and if those pieces become part of those features. Um, we're getting close to the hour mark, so I think what I'm going to do is wrap up with some key pieces for this webinar, and then we'll go back to answering more Q&A as we go through. So let me share my final presentation pieces. Um, this is as we go through here. You'll see um, ck12.org slash tools and apps. You can either go directly to this link or at the footer of any page, um, and that gives you information about our three apps, our Flexbook app, our Sims app, and in particular for this particular topic, um, the practice app. So that's something that you can access on um, any iOS or Android device. And so I would definitely recommend having students download that if they're using practice, because it's super easy to work with. Um, on that same page, you can see some of our integration. So if you can't wait till tomorrow at three o'clock when we do our learning management system, piece, you can check further down on that tools and apps page and learn more about some of our integration. Um, we're going to be covering these four as well as Blackboard in tomorrow's presentation. And then as always, we have our groups and practice assignment form. Um, so we're trying to continue with those easy tiny URLs so you can work with the CEP Certified Educator Program 17 and then GP for groups and practice 101. Um, this is already posted on our webpage, but you can go directly to there to complete the assignment if you're doing this webinar as part of that program. And then, as we said, you can go to our certified 2017 page for all of kind of the pieces of the program as we work our way through. Um, you can sign up for those office hours. Underneath the session information and resources at the bottom, you'll see the links to those assignments. And then all the way down at the bottom, is the webinar um, archived videos. So definitely a place to go check out as you work your way through. A couple upcoming sessions that are particularly relevant for this, you guys, I know some people are taking this as part of the Intelligent Pathway, others are taking this as a bonus added class for something. Whatever that looks like, you know, you don't have to be in a pathway, but if you are interested in learning more about practice, the customizing practice session, we're doing one next Tuesday, so check that out and we'll do one again after the 4th of July. Um, and that will get into the nitty gritty kind of extra complicated assignments and customizing practice and all of those pieces. Um, the learning management systems one I just mentioned. Um, so there's one tomorrow and then one later in the summer. And then for those that have asked for kind of a script on how teachers use this, we don't have anything necessarily written in down to the level of detail. Um, but that using practice in groups with students as well as the matching one for Flexbooks are really going to get into kind of different ways that teachers use CK12 in their class and some of the strategies that they use. So definitely check that out. Um, and it looks like we're getting questions about the tiny URL. That should be in the chat window shortly or maybe already in the chat window. So definitely check um, the chat window out if you're looking to click on that link and go from there. Um, this is if you want to register for any upcoming sessions, just go back to that registration page, ck12.org slash jumpstart. And finally, you know, we've been getting some feedback already from some of our first webinars, and hopefully those are continuing to make these webinars better and better. I saw someone giving Laramie a lot of praise in chat and Q&A today for the work that he's been doing, so that's great. Um, so please continue to give us feedback and let us know how we're doing. It's that same general feedback form for every webinar. And at this point in time, as I said, we'd always try to wrap up within an hour. Um, so I think we're right on the dot. So if you have questions, email support at ck12.org. Let us know what's up. Um, check out that page, register for more webinars. Um, and from now, we're just gonna continue to answer questions as we work our way through until you guys are out of questions for the day. Um, so let's see if we can switch over to there and see what questions might be coming up. Um, 
So one of them, it says, I saw the Edmodo logo. Is CK12 linkable to Edmodo? Um, the answer to that is yes. We are integrated with Edmodo, so you can actually assign any of our practice within the Edmodo app. Um, and then we have a couple of pieces to clarify um, in the embed example you gave, if the video is part of the read and you assign it from the modality section, do students need to view the video outside of the read for her to monitor it? Um, so those are super specific questions in there. Um, because of the way our system works, I think they have to view it within that modality page and access that. Um, but we actually can check on those nitty gritty pieces and get back to you directly on that. That's a new question that I have not actually been given yet, which is impressive. So, um, and then we have a question back to the program piece about a page that shows every webinar you've signed up for. So let me go back a couple of slides for a second. This page right here, that's our program page, ck12.org slash certified 2017. That is the page you're gonna wanna go to for everything for this program. Um, so definitely check that out and see what's up. Um, I think our certified tab on the bottom of our footer should shortly, now that we're actually into this program, be switching over to this page. So it will bring you here first. Um, but definitely check that piece out. So I think I'm gonna pause for a second so we can see how we're doing in Q&A. It looks like we're getting a bunch of different questions and let's see if we can maybe group some of these as we work our way through. So we have, we have some on assigning a test and the report look like for that. Um, so maybe Laramie can steal the screen back um, for a second. Um, in a minute at least, and then he can show kind of that report feature. Um, in, in terms of a report, it actually is going to look, I'm just, he's going to pull up any practice report, it's going to look identical to what they did for practice. Um, and they, except that the percentages will be different. So the percentage will be based on the um, number of questions you put in there, because you actually wanted them to kind of see that piece as a larger part. Um, and so we're going to go from there and have him actually try to steal the screen and we'll see, see if we can do it. I think we're good. I think I got it. Okay. So yeah, I'm going to take a look at a specific assignment that included some practice questions. Um, fortunately, all of these are, let's see, Pythagorean theorem, Pythagorean triples. Take a look at the reports. And so I understood the question. The, the question was, what does a teacher see when they've completed a practice question, like a practice assignment? Actually, what do they see when, excuse me, what do they see when they are looking at a quiz piece, not just the practice? Oh, OK. I'm going to have to assign a quiz then to do that. We can do that. It won't take very long. Let's go into assignments. I'm going to create a new assignment. We'll call it geometry, uh, something about proofs. I'm just randomly pick, picking things here. I'm going to add a quiz. This one is just random questions. Save. This is a test assignment with a quiz. So I'm going to let Laramie um, take a second to make that and you can see it. I know there's some quizzes kind of buried in there as well, um, but he'll, he'll take a sec to kind of go from there. I'm going to answer some general program questions while he's doing that. Um, so we have some questions about changing the date of a session. Um, if, you, if it's nearby, you should get a cancellation option in your reminder email and you can cancel that. You can always go back to our regular Jumpstart page um, and register for any extra new sessions as you work your way through. Um, so go ahead and do that piece or you can always email jumpstart at ck12.org to make that happen. So um, we had a question about, can we embed any modality onto a web page or PowerSchool Haiku learning page? So all of our content has a unique URL at the top. So in this case, um, this is a group, so it would be kind of a, a strange one to work off of. 
But for any of the reads or other modalities, there's always a unique URL as you're working your way through. Um, and you can use that URL to link from anything and go from there. Um, so I would say you can't necessarily embed everything, but you can definitely use a link to have students link from any other place if it's not already integrated. Um, let's see. And then there's a question on a way to organize the library. So actually, you know what, maybe I'll steal the screen over for a second while he's working on that um, and show you another page just so he can add that piece. If I go into my library here, so you guys can all see my homepage, I hope. Um, if you go into your library, there's a couple different ways to organize your library. So one is just sorting. So you could sort this part up at the top. Um, you can go from here and click recently modified to organize accordingly. And then filtering is a great option. So if you wanted to sort by different types, you could filter. And then my last favorite part is actually this manage folder option. So if you click on any of these different modalities in your library, you can create a new folder and add it there or add it to a folder that already exists. So this is a science concept, so let's add it to science and not math. And I can apply that folder and then if I go down into my folders, you'll see that that book now exists in that folder. Um, so that's a great option in terms of kind of organizing your library and understanding how different pieces are there. Um, so we had a question about the adaptive practice compared to the adaptive practice on Brain Genie by CK12. Brain Genie is actually, um, kind of an old tool that some of you guys might have been using beforehand. We still make that available for anyone that was using it, but we've incorporated all of the practice from Brain Genie plus all of our standard practice in CK12 into our adaptive practice system. So if you're looking for more than just what was offered by Brain Genie, then definitely check out our database within the practice tools. Um, so it's not necessarily different questions, it's more that the CK12 one includes Brain Genie plus more at this point in time. Um. If students are accessing via a web browser, then the issue of jumping from app to app is resolved, whether you're on a tablet, phone, read, video, practice, et cetera. Um, so yeah, you can access, we really try to make CK12 accessible from everywhere. So you can access our content via one of those three apps if you want to, or you can access through any web browser on any device. Um, so the only kind of restriction is that Sims and Plix need a screen size of either seven or nine inches in order to get enough space on your screen to really do that manipulation. Um, but otherwise that works from there. So I'm going to switch this over to Laramie for a second so he can show what he was working on. Okay. Um, so if we go to the report section here, I had to create a, a new activity for a student because I didn't have a, a, a quiz available. But if we go into my reports for students, I clicked on Bob Tester, I scroll down, and one of the assignments that are down here at the bottom is that test assignment with a quiz that you saw me create a little bit ago. Now if I click on Untitled, that was the name of my quiz, I see the report, and this actually shows me, just like the practice does, which questions he answered, and which questions he didn't answer, and what answers he put in when he got them correct or incorrect, just like it does with a practice. So this way, as a teacher, you can not only see what, whether or not a student completed a quiz, but specifically how well they did on it, what kinds of things they understood, what kinds of things they didn't understand, so that you know where to go as far as encouraging them to, uh, to increase your understanding later. So we had a question about creating a quiz being covered in one of the other webinars. Um, you can make, if maybe Laramie can click on the just assignments piece right there, um, so you can create quizzes through assignments. You can create quizzes by customizing any practice. Um, and there's a lot of kind of pieces as you're working your way through um, to cover. So if, that's probably a larger question. So I would really recommend that you either join us for office hours to go into the details of that or join the customizing practice because that, that's going to be kind of a larger topic as, that we cover. Um, so we had a question about, in terms of developing Classroom, I'm assuming you mean kind of the integration with Google Classroom. I believe we're working on that at this point in time. And so right now you can share any modality to Google Classroom using our green share a plane. 
um, which is kind of floating at the bottom of most of the modality pages. Just look for that little green paper airplane. Um, but I think we were aiming for probably fall for integration with the Google Classroom for grades as well. Um, so right now, if you are starting your summer or partway through your summer, um, kind of, you're not going to be able to see that integration at this point in time, but hopefully you'll see it around the time you get back this fall. Now we have a question about students completing an assigned practice via a link as opposed to through their CK12 account. So as long as they are logged in, so whether that, like in order to do that practice, it's basically gonna prompt them to log in. Um, so they can do that on the app itself or they can do it through any browser, um, but they do need to log in in order for the system to record their practice as being for them. And they, of course, need to make sure that they're logged in with the account you have them enrolled as a student with. If they've made their own CK12 account, you're not going to see the reports. You have to make sure that they're logged in with the student account that they were assigned. And we had a question um, related to kind of integration with scheduling and assignments. Um, at this point in time, I don't know that it's kind of integrated with any of those pieces. So the students would want to check their assignments within CK12. Um, or within one of the integrated components that we brought up there. Um, so if there's something specific that you're using, I recommend that you contact us with that and we can talk about different ways for integration um, or options as we move down the road. Um, but at this point in time, if they're trying to sync assignments, it would either need to be through an integrated LMS or checking their CK12 account. Um, so let's see, I think we have a couple questions still floating through here. Um, we answered that one. It says, what tools on our pages are able to be printed out? Um, so you can actually download practice. So um, if you maybe went to that same practice modality page. Um, so if you click on kind of as a teacher, if you click on preview here, you can see this piece, but um, you can download your practice here. And actually as a teacher, if you're browsing, there's the option to customize. So right here, you can see the customize option under the share to groups option. And that's one way you can make a quiz. So if you're trying to kind of get jump started, that's a way to do that. Um, but if you were browsing as well, you would have the option to download your practice. Um, any created or customized book that you're working off of, you know, we want to make sure that if you're doing work on that, you have the ability to access that. Um, so you could download that piece as well and print it out if you needed to do so. And it says, I think this one we already covered in terms of the video within the read showing on there. That's a new question that I've gotten and I haven't tested that all out, but um, I will definitely have checked that out and get back to the couple of you guys that asked that specifically and add it to our Q&A answer sheets. Um, but my, because of the way that our system works, I would say they probably have to assign it separately in order for it to register, because otherwise they're just registering the read piece as we work our way through. Um, and there was a question about printing a book from the reader. So if you're looking at a customized book, you'd be looking at your customized books on our website and downloading the PDF from there. And right now, kind of those reports questions that are asking about seeing quiz scores um, as a whole and not just individually. So if maybe, um, you know, if you're looking at a particular assignment, so Laramie, if you could go back to the grades piece there. Yep, so if you go to groups and you go to the Jumpstart grades one there, or any of kind of your reports, if you're looking at a report, since we're in a different demo account. Um, from there, if you click on an assignment as a whole, so if we look at the reports option, and then you click on kind of the, lar the title up at the top, that's gonna give you, so this was, looks like it's a check, so it gives you kind of how the student did for that piece. Um, so I'm guessing this was, it's a sim as you worked your way through here, the phases of the moon sim. Um, so th that meant that they got partway through it, started interacting with it, and got credit for working with that simulation. 
Um, if this was practice, all those lines and checks would actually be percentages on how the student has done if they've started accessing it. So that would be a quick way to see kind of the scores for a class for a particular assignment together. Um, we're still getting some more questions in here. So if the CK12 practice app is being used to complete an assignment, will progress be shown? Um, yes, that is, that is completely integrated with our assignments. The practice app, students can even see on the practice app if they're logged in at the beginning, they can kind of see their assignments um, so they can access it directly. Um, and then if they're reading an assignment on the Flexbook app offline, then it wouldn't necessarily sync from there. Um, but you can't assign a whole book at a time. You'd really want to assign at the level of a particular read. And the Flexbook app allows them to access that offline. Um, so if you're looking to have them kind of see that, then I would definitely check out that particular read online. Um, they can kind of access it and go from there. But you could also just say, you know, read all this piece, let me know when you're done and we can go from there. Um, I think we had one question that we missed earlier out, um, which asked about solutions for science questions as well as the math ones. I know Laramie knows the math because he's in charge of all of our math content. Um, I think that might be a little different because some of the science questions are um, they don't require kind of multi steps to complete. They're a lot more comprehension based. Um, so we can check on where that stands with our uh, lead science person as well and get back to you on that point. Um, but I think that's a little different just because of the nature of science versus mathematics. Um, I think at this point in time, we have a couple that looks like they got kind of not marked, but we've actually answered live. So if there are other questions, let us know shortly. Um, but it will kind of wrap up in the next minute or so and then encourage you to join us for any of our future sessions. I am going to hijack the microphone here for just a moment for something that's totally off the off the reservation as far as our script here and say I am absolutely thrilled to be working with the team here at CK12. If you have questions and you send in questions, I guarantee you somebody will pay attention. The, the group that is here is absolutely dedicated to making sure that what we offer is the best we can offer and that what we do is the most, the most customized and um, completed and finalized offerings that we can give a teacher to teach a student that we are absolutely capable of. So I am just thrilled to be a part of this and I'm so glad that all of you are discovering that it's here and that we're in a position to share this with you. So I think with that, we're gonna sign off. If you have any other questions, feel free to email support, email Jumpstart, um, sign up for our office hours or join us again. Thank you guys so much. Have a great evening, everyone.